you're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode we're going to show you how to make an improved version of the $5 pocket stun gun. So first off, I should say we've already done a project very, very similar to this. However, I have improved the design of the stun gun. So basically, this video comes at the many requests I got on how I made the newer version shown in the pocket EMP video. And also inside this video, we're going to talk about the circuitry inside the boost converter, showing how that works. So the main component that we're going to be using is this boost converter. Now, I personally actually have a lot of these boost converters because they're super cheap. Basically, on eBay, I found each one of these boost converters for about $2.11. And so taking it out of its package, you can see that there are four wires coming out of it. The red and green wire at the bottom are going to be for the positive and the negative. And the two shiny red wires coming out of the top are going to be the high voltage outputs of the boost converter. Now these boost converters show that they're rated for 3 to 6 volts DC on the input. However, in this video we're going to be using a 9 volt battery, and I'll show why we can do that without burning it out later on. Now for the 9 volt battery terminal for the stun gun, you can order one for really cheap, or you can make a 9 volt battery terminal with an old dead one such as this. So the first thing I'm going to do is pry away the metal casing. And just like that on the inside you can see all the AAA battery equivalents that adds up in series to the 9 volts on top. So now I'm just going to pull this terminal and snip these wires here. And just like that we have our 9 volt battery terminal. Remember though that when we wire this up, this positive side is going to snap onto what was the negative, and the negative is going to snap onto what was the positive. And so we're going to wire it accordingly just like that. Okay, now we're going to solder this red wire from the boost converter onto this pad back here. Okay, we're going to start off by putting a little pad of solder there. Okay, so now I have that red wire placed on top of it, and we're going to just solder it onto it. The next thing I'm going to be using is the small momentary switch. You can buy quite a bit of these for extremely cheap on the internet. However, most electronics also have these, so you can salvage them out of that if you don't want to buy them. I have the momentary switch hooked up to a buzzer, and as you can see, it'll only turn it on when I hit the button. Now we're going to solder on the bottom right hand pin and the top left hand pin. Now referring back to the boost converter, we're going to solder one of these two pins on the switch to this green wire here. So I'm going to take that green wire and make a good mechanical connection before I add the solder and you just need to put on a little bit of solder to get a good connection. And then I'm going to take these snippers and snip away the excess wire. And then on the other end of this momentary switch, I'm going to attach this little strand of black wire I have lying around. And just as before, we're going to solder this into place. And now the other end of this black wire is going to be connected onto this negative tab here of the 9 volt battery terminal. So just as before, we'll add a pad of solder, and then we'll solder on the black wire. And as for the circuitry, that's all we need. And so now before moving on, I'm going to verify that it's working by connecting up to my power supply. As you can see with it connected up, we don't get anything, but when we press the switch, we get a pretty powerful arc of electricity. There's a little crevice at the bottom of the boost converter. And so as you can see, we can sort of just tuck all those wires down into there. Okay, now I'm going to take some hot glue and just squirt it into here. And now that the glue is dried down, you can see that all the wires stay into place down there at the terminal. And now to cover up some of those bare wires, I'm going to be using this electrical tape. And so I'm just going to start here at the bottom and do a couple wraps going up. Okay, so now it looks a little bit nicer with those bare wires covered up. Now the last thing we need to do is take two nails. Now I like to use these finishing nails because they don't get in the way as much. However, it's just important that when we attach it onto it, the top is going to be closer than any other part. And although this isn't necessary for the purpose of the stun gun, this way it will arc at the top and I just think that looks a little bit cooler. Now I'm going to cut the nails at about here. If you have a jewelry saw or angle grinder, you can use that to cut it. However, since I'm assuming most of you guys won't have that, I'm just going to be using some pliers. With these pliers, it's pretty hard to cut the nails. However, if I line them up into it, then whack the top of it with a hammer, you can see the nail comes apart. And then take the first one you cut and use that to measure out the distance to cut the next one. Okay, now I'm going to snip down these red wires a little bit. And now that I've also stripped the rubber off of them, I'm going to loop them around this nail. Now you can either just wrap it around very tightly or you can add solder. Since I have my soldering iron all warm, I'm just going to solder it on to the lower part of the nail here. Okay, so now that I have both those wires attached to those nails, we're going to be gluing them to the top. When I glue them, I'm going to keep the top at approximately that distance. Be sure that you don't have the distance too far apart, otherwise it might blow the boost converter. And so I'm going to slowly add layers of hot glue to the top of this to hold the nails into place. Now I'm going to keep on adding hot glue until I get to about this point here. This will ensure that the nails stay solid in their place. Okay, so now our pocket stun gun is complete. And so as a test, let's connect with the 9-volt battery and hit the button. And so as you can see with our 9 volt battery, it gives us a pretty powerful arc of electricity. Now I'm using this rechargeable 9 volt battery. It's good because it can deliver quite a bit of current. However, since I'm assuming most of you guys have these regular 9 volt batteries, let's go ahead and test this. As you can see, it's not as constant, but it is still very powerful. As you can see, the arc produced by this is powerful enough to ignite paper. So now let's talk about how these boost converter modules work. Although I can't really get into it that well, I think it's something like this. 
Here they have something that turns the initial voltage going in into a square wave. Then that square wave goes across two different small transformers to step up the voltage. And then at the very end of the last transformer they have this little circuit here. And basically if you apply alternating current to a voltage multiplier, then the output voltage of these two points here will be twice as high as the initial point you put in. How the voltage multiplier here works is that basically this capacitor here will get charged up, and then when it goes on the negative swing of the square wave, this other capacitor will get charged up while this one will lose its charge. However, this increased voltage will also dump into this capacitor, raising it to a higher voltage than it was initially. As for our stun gun here, that voltage will keep on building till it's enough to overcome the gap of air distance in between here. And so that's why basically, as long as we don't have this gap too far apart, we can still supply it with 9 volts without burning out the entire circuit. Now with the regular 9 volt batteries, I haven't had a problem with leaving it on for long periods of time. However, with the lithium batteries that can supply large amounts of current, I found if you leave it on for too long, it might overheat the circuits inside and thus destroy it. However, it's also worth saying that although these are advertised to be 400 kilovolts, realistically they're at most about 10,000 volts. And so just know that for this guy, it's about 10,000 volts at the top there. Now some other warnings guys, this will produce a pretty nasty shock. In fact, I've accidentally shocked myself with it through my shirt and it left burn marks that lasted for weeks. However, you should also know it's very unlikely that this would be lethal to someone. Since the distance is so short here, it's unlikely that it would go through the heart or anything. So as long as you don't get shocked with it near sensitive areas such as your head or your heart, you should be fine. However, due to the power of this thing, do not use this to shock anyone as a joke. So now you know how you can make your very own cheap stun gun and some applications behind how it works. Well, it's getting pretty cold in here, so thank you all so much for watching. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate it if you'd leave a thumbs up as it helps the channel quite a bit. On a similar note, I'd appreciate any critique that you guys have if you guys would leave that in the comments below, as critiquing my videos and giving me suggestions will hopefully make them better in the future. Anyways, once again guys, this can be dangerous, so please remember to be safe, and have a wonderful day. You're watching Keystone Science, and in today's episode we're going to show you how to make your very own induction heater.